I ran film that I've never used before, the Fomapan 200, through a camera that I haven't run film through in 35 to 40 years. I am going to develop some film in some D76 developer that the package says expired in 2017. I haven't developed a roll of film in 30 years. Today is the day we are going to develop this roll of Fomapan 200 that we ran through the Calamar 660 camera the other day. I'm James Fisher and this is Vintage Illumination Photography. We're here today in my laundry room to process this roll of 120 Fomapan 200 film. In an earlier video, and I'll link it right here, we actually went out with a 1963 vintage Calamar 660 camera and used this roll of film to do photographs around town. Now, if you've seen the video, you already know, and if you haven't seen it, you really should watch it. We had a number of issues. The camera basically kept failing the whole day. The, the focal plane shutter would stick and wouldn't fully come down and so the mirror from the single lens reflex would not drop fully and I have no idea what's actually on this roll of film and how things worked out. We use the Sunny 16 rule for exposure since there's no such thing as a light meter in that camera. Hopefully I did my calculations correct. Now I want to let you know I haven't developed a roll of black and white film in probably 30 years. My guess is 1990 is the last time I ran a roll of film through developer. But I did go to the local photography store and I picked up some D76 developer, which I really always enjoyed using. I also picked up a package to make a gallon of fixer that we're going to use to fix the images. Normally you use three solutions. You use a developer, a stop bath, and a fixer. But I've decided I'm going to eliminate the stop bath. We're just going to use a water stop bath. The developer is a base solution and the fixer or and stop bath are an acidic solution. So what you're trying to do with the stop bath is you just stop all development. The fixer makes it permanent. Since digital really took over the photographic industry a few years ago, a lot of people have never shot on film and aren't really familiar with film and how it works. I'm going to give you my quick explanation of what film is and how it works. Film is basically light sensitive silver salts suspended in gelatin, put on an acetone or call it plastic base, and then in this case with roll film, it's rolled up in a roll and then you expose it in your camera and then develop it. I've always explained how film works as a swimming pool. So imagine a large, maybe an Olympic sized swimming pool full of jello and it's in the dark because the people that are going to get in the swimming pool are all afraid of the light. Kind of different, huh? I'm usually you're afraid of the dark. But they're all afraid of the light. So they all get in the pool and they pack in really, really tight and they're all in the pool and they're all chilling in this jello pool. Then what happens is somebody opens up the curtains, bam, and light hits these guys that are in the pool. They get scared, they wet themselves. The light shuts off and there they are. They're sitting there, they wet themselves in the pool in the dark. Somebody comes along and pours in the pool that solution you've heard about that when somebody pees in your pool it turns the water blue right around them. They pour in this kind of stuff and then where everybody wet it develops. It leaves a stain. Then you put the fixture in and make it permanent. That's a really quick and very simplified explanation of what's actually going on. The silver salts when they're hit with light in varying degrees of light excrete a substance that then can be developed with the developer. In this case, we're using Kodak D76. It develops the image. So the more light that hit those silver salts, the more they secreted, the darker that area is going to be on the negative because a negative is reversed of the positive. So the very bright areas are going to be dark or black on the negative and the very light areas or the very the the very dark areas in your image, the shadows or where there's absolutely no light at all, are going to be clear because then when you put that in a photographic enlarger and transmit light through, it's going to reverse that. So then 
it turns into a positive because two negatives do equal a positive in photography. That's an interesting thought. So what we're doing is we're getting everything ready here to mix up our dry chemicals and then we're going to process this film and see what we have on it. Now I want to give a shout out to Dave at The Old Camera Guy because this was totally his idea. I never thought of this. I do some sous vide cooking and so I've got this immersion heater going on. So I put a gallon of water in there and I've got this immersion heater set and to 126 degrees and we are making this water 126 degrees because that's a good temperature to mix up these dry chemicals to make sure that they get fully um, dissolved in the distilled water solution. Photographic developer likes to be stored in brown bottles and I happen to have this um, swing top model really designed for beer and we're going to be using it to store the developer. The fixer I'm not as worried about. We're just going to go ahead and keep that in one of these gallon containers that the distilled water came in. To process the film we're going to be using this developing tank and again I want to give a shout out to Robert Robbins. He's an old friend of mine from one of my old hometowns and he was very kind to gift me with a couple of these. So what it is, it's a light tight container and in there is a reel that we're going to put the film on. And the, this is one of the plastic models. They make stainless steel ones, they're a little different. This one has a like a shuttle mechanism that the film winds from the outside in. The stainless steel reels have a little clip, you put the film in the middle and then you actually wind it from the inside out. They both work very, very well. Um, these are a little easier to operate and they're adjustable. You can do different film sizes in these because we're gonna be doing, in a future vlog, we'll be doing some 35 millimeter film development. So we're gonna put the film in here and we're gonna, we're gonna shuttle it in and then that this with the exposed film that's still light sensitive will go in the tank, the top of the tank will go on and seal and become a light tight container. The developer will pour in through the top. We're gonna to agitate it on the schedule and then pour that out. And then we'll be doing a water bath. Then we'll be putting the fixer in to fix the image. It'll be in, we'll be agitating that. Then we're gonna pour the fixer out. Then we'll be washing the film. We're actually gonna peek at it first to make sure everything is okay at that point. Then we'll be washing the film to get all the chemistry off, make sure it's good and clean. Then we're gonna hang the film up to dry. And then from there, I'll do some scans of the film to digitize it in the computer so that you can actually see the images, if any, that came out from our photographic session. So if I read the instructions on this pack of developer, it's to make one liter of solution. It wants you to mix 800 milliliters of water, which is between 122 and 131 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. So we're, we're gonna mix that up. Um, until dissolved, then we're going to add additional water to where we get to the full one liter mark and then I'm going to pour that into the brown bottle. So let's have at it. Let's see, you're gonna, we're watching all this stuff in real time. I'm going to grab this. This water is nice and warm. There we go. We're going to put our roughly 800, there's 500, about 750, right about there, milliliters of water into the flask. We're gonna cut, look at, they even tell you exactly right there where to cut this. That's really handy. It's very, very nice of the yellow godfather to let us know. It's kind of fun. I feel like a mad scientist going to open up the cooler bottle of distilled water. We're going to add water to bring that up to our one liter mark. Now that we're mixed, let's pour it from the flask into the swing top bottle. You know, they say that the nose connects to the brain with the most direct and that sense bring back memories. I gotta tell you, I'm having like a flood of 
memories coming back and being in certain places and being in my old dark room smelling this developer. Let's seal this up. D76, ready to go. So I'll do a similar process mixing up the gallon of fixer, but I'm gonna mix it right into one of these gallon containers to hold onto it. I just had kind of a totally random thought. I think this is actually one of the bravest videos I've ever done. Let's run through it. I ran film that I've never used before, the Fomapan 200, through a camera that I haven't run film through in 35 to 40 years. I am gonna develop some film in some D76 developer that the package says expired in 2017. I haven't developed a roll of film in 30 years. I'm gonna fix the film, make it permanent, and developer that expired in 2018. I'm gonna load light-sensitive black and white film onto a film reel, and I don't have a dark room to load the film. And I'm doing it all on video to present to you to see how everything works. Either this is gonna be a phenomenal success or an absolute auger in crash and burn, definitely not the right stuff failure. How am I gonna get film onto that reel in total darkness if I don't have a dark room? That's where this comes in. We are gonna be using this winter coat as a light proof bag. Things that we need to have on hand to load this film into this tank. We will need a pair of scissors. We'll need the film, obviously, the tank and the reel. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the coat. We will place everything inside this coat. Zip it up. Arms in the sleeves. Everything we need is right in here. We have to do it all by feel. We're gonna to have to cut the tab off that film, unroll it, put it onto the reel, make sure it goes on properly. You know, we'll be doing that in the dark, and then put the reel with the film in the tank and snap the lid back on, and then we can come into the light. I'm not gonna do it in this room. There's way too much light. There's six windows in my laundry room here. I've actually repurposed a closet. Um, there's a little shelf in there, and that's what we're gonna be using to do this. I shut the door and it's almost perfectly dark, not quite, but this last little step will make sure that everything is in total darkness. Absolute success. Our exposed film is in the tank and ready for development and fixing. I'm gonna attempt to show you what actually I did in the dark closet inside my makeshift light changing bag. This is actually the paper backing that was on that 120 roll of film with the film removed. So there's, there's actually a little space in there, but we're gonna unroll this. I'll kind of show you what was in there and how I rolled it onto this um, reel. I happen to have a couple of spare reels. This is kind of a makeshift, really quickie demonstration of film development and going through one of the best processes I have ever seen of anybody explaining film development recently was Dave, the old camera guy. And I'm gonna link to his video right here. I I'm serious, if you like film, if you enjoy film photography and film cameras, check out his channel. He's got a lot, uh, and I mean a lot of great stuff there. So this is what I had in that bag. I had the roll of exposed film still sealed, a pair of scissors, the tank and the reel. I had the reel in the tank, so I knew where it was all the time. In the dark, I then used the scissors. I cut this, this was here. I just ran the scissors right up through, cut this tape right here, and then began unrolling and hit the film. I believe the film is right about where this hole is. So right about there, that's where the film was. Now the film is, was taped to this black backing. 
if we keep going, we'll see how long that film is. And it was taped right there with that piece of masking tape. So I just tore the film right there and then ran from the backside because this tape wasn't there um, up into the reel. So let me kind of simulate that a little bit. Took the film reel out, took the square edge of the film, pushed it through these areas here. Now the film is much stiffer than this paper, so this may not actually work. Pulled it through and passed these cams right here. They're kind of a one-way mechanism where it can go. And then carefully just rotate this. And what happens is that film just winds from the outside in onto this reel. And so it just keeps going. It winds from the outside in all the way around so that there's space in here for the developer and the fixer to get in. I did want to point out that in the video where I did the actual photography on this roll of film, I called the film ASA 200. I just want you to show, I want to show you, it actually says ASA 200 on this Fomapan film. Now on the box, it does say ISO 200 and then 24 DIN on there. We'll probably do a, a short video at some point kind of explaining when the term changed from ASA to ISO and what the heck this other 24 is with a little degree, 24 DIN after it. I looked up the development with Fomapan 200 film and D76 developer at using the stock solution, which is the solution recommended by Kodak. If we expose a film at ISO 200, which is what it was rated at, and that's what we shot it at, um, we need to develop this for between five and six minutes at our 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, if the solution is warmer, our development time goes down. If it's colder, development time goes up. There's other times you wanna change that development time as well. And there's other things that you can do with the developer. You could dilute it, for instance, one to one. In other words, you cut it in half, how much is going in there. And then at ISO 200, you're gonna develop it for eight to nine minutes. Again, at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm actually thinking about doing that, doing a one-to-one -one development. Usually that's just a one shot, then you toss that developer. Where I got this information is actually the massive development chart, which you can find at uh, digitaltruth.com. And it's simply a drop-down list. How easy can it be? You choose the film you have, you choose the developer you have, and bam, there it populates out right on this sheet. You can print it out or you can look at it on your phone or on your computer screen, whatever works best for you. And then all the information that you need is right there. We're just about ready to develop the film now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a pre-soak on the film with water. But I hear that the Fomapan film has a really um, strong or thick anihilation backer and it's tinted green and will tint the developer green as well if you plan to reuse the developer. So we're going to pre-soak it to get rid of that um, any kind of green dye that's going to come off and because of that I've decided at the last minute I'm going to do a one-to-one -one dilution on the developer use it as a one shot that way I'll actually end up with four I'll be able to develop four rolls of film with uh, the developer diluted one-to-one. -one. All right, so let's pour in our water. And this is a little temperature thermometer and you can turn the film. When the developer's in, we'll agitate the film occasionally just to make sure that the um, developer is circulating through. Here is our film that's soaking. We're gonna pour this out and we're gonna see if there's any color at all that comes out of this. I'm just fascinated to see. Oh my goodness, look at that. I think the one shot was the right idea to do with this. This container holds 500 milliliters or about two cups of liquid. So we're gonna fill this up to that amount, right to there. We're at our 68 degrees that we want by the time everything is mixed together. I've got the timer set for nine minutes and five seconds to give me a bit of a countdown while this goes. Let's go, four, three, two, one. Here we go. Do an initial agitation of the film. We go. Let's do a quick 
again, all we're doing is washing off some of that developer to help preserve our fixing solution. Pour the fixer in. A little bit of agitation on this. So this stays in here until we're fully fixed. And uh, then we're gonna pour it back into the bottle and then we'll pour it back into the bottle and see if we actually have any images on this film. Are you nervous at all? I know I am. I have no idea if there's any images on this or not. It's the final countdown on the fixer. Let's see. Let's open her up. negatives we have images this is fantastic we're gonna put this back in and we're going to uh, wash the film well, our film is washed and we're ready to hang it up to dry a best practice is to use photo flow as kind of the last rinse of the film you just dip it in the photo flow or you just mix up a really weak solution and what that does it helps it's a water wetter it helps the water sheet off of the film so you don't get any water spot. Well, I don't have any photo flow, so I use just the barest hint of liquid soap. I mean, um, kind of like uh, just the tiniest droplet, and then even mix that up with water, dump almost all of it out, then mix water with that. So there's just barely anything there. So we're gonna unroll the film right now off of this. And here we have images and some blanks. If you remember from our escapade when we were out photographing, a couple of the images were blank and so we had nothing. Hang this up, put a small weight on the bottom, we use our fingers as a squeegee. Here are our negatives, our six by six negatives of the different things that we photographed. So we shall see, there's our trestle bridge and our piling. And actually one of the very first things I, I photographed, one of the very first things I photographed was this sign um, that I've always found very fascinating. So um, anyway, we'll let this dry. I'll get the images into the computer and we'll see what they look like.